I'm Jeff Patterson. I'm the project director of Courage to Resist, and you are watching The Punk Patriot. Who are you and why should we care? Well, my name is Jeff Patterson. I am the project director of a group called Courage to Resist, and we exist to do one thing, and that is to support uh, war resistors within the United States military. Mm -hmm. There's about 200 people that have gone to jail already for refusing to return to Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm and more people are facing military court-martials and, and jail all the time. Uh, we apply pressure at very strategic times to help people in the military uh, resolve their cases without going to prison for a very long time. And we also help get people out of prison uh, through the appeals process. Uh, we've helped dozens of people raise uh, almost a half million dollars in the last few years to fund their civilian legal defenses. And every single case, uh, people are better off for that if, when they have a real attorney fighting for them in court martial. The military justice system uh, is obviously stacked against them, but a lot of times it can, you know, our intervention can make the difference of somebody going to jail for a month versus 12 months, of somebody getting out with other than honorable discharge or going to jail for six months and getting a worse discharge. Mm -hmm. Um, and we do that through letter writing campaigns, call-in campaigns to, to military commanders. Uh, we help involve uh, congressional representatives when that's helpful. Uh, we have a network of mental health uh, professionals that speak to some of the underlying uh, issues like uh, post-traumatic stress. And all those positively affect uh, the outcomes. And uh, we, we rely on volunteers, uh, people, a network around the country that fund, funds our work who makes those phone calls, who writes those letters, including writing people that are in jail. And that lifeline is a huge uh, thing that keeps people's uh, spirits up while they do that jail time. Um, and if someone wanted to get involved, where would they go? Go to Courage to Resist at CourageToResist.org. Give us a call at 510-488-3559. Uh, we, we answer questions all day from military service people. Um, it's confidential. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll see dozens and dozens of stories by objectors, but those are people that we've worked with who know that they want to pe speak out publicly. Most people don't, and that's fine too. Do you agree with the political philosopher Ice-T that you must check yourself before you wreck yourself? I, I, I don't think there's, it's, I don't think that's really debatable. I, I do think you, if, unless you have your own shit together, it's hard to go out and change, and change the world. Um, you know, I, my, my philosophy is born out of uh, Jello Biafra, mainly. Who's this guy in your pen here? Well, we not only support war resistors, we also support people who come into conflict with the military for reasons of conscience. Mm -hmm. And that includes, uh, right now, Bradley Manning. He is a 22-year-old uh, native of Oklahoma mm -hmm. who is facing the rest of his life uh, being in prison. And he is alleged to... And that's for um, lip-syncing to Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga has a role in this, but uh, not directly. Uh -huh. uh, Bradley is facing life in prison for allegedly leaking a uh, video of a, uh, of basically a collateral murder, is what it's called, of 11 uh, civilians being killed by a U.S. helicopter gunship in, in Baghdad. Uh -huh. So we see that as like, we see that as a, as a war crime. And the Pentagon- With the, re the releasing the video? Well, actually, what is happening in the video, we believe, is a war crime that's outside the, the laws of warfare. And I believe that Bradley also uh, believed the same thing. I was so uh, t taken aback uh, when he saw this video and realizing that the Army was covering it up, mm -hmm. that he may, have, he, if, he may be the person who leaked it. War is really depressing. Um, isn't it just easier to just not think about it? I think so, and I think a lot of Americans are doing that. But the problem is we've created two million new combat veterans in the last few years, and those people are coming back to this country. They're going to be living amongst us. They have significant problems, and they're going to need help for the rest of their lives. Yeah, but we have the VA, right? We do have a VA. Doesn't that take care of everything? The VA, actually, some of the, some of the doctors really try very hard, but their workload has doubled while their resources have increased by about 7%. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, a society-wide, uh, those people are going to be standing on the street corners, you know, asking, asking for that money. They're going to be filling the jails. They're going to be committing suicide. They're going to be beating their wives. And, you know, unless we take proactive help to assist them, 
uh, you know, the costs in the long run are pretty damn significant. Did you hear that the war in Iraq is over? I did hear that. Yeah. Uh, Unfor and, you know, unfortunately, we're sure going to have over 50,000 combat troops. We have the largest... Oh, no, they're non-combat troops. They are... They're going to be armed with, like, kittens, flowers. I think. Yeah, flowers and lambs. Well, they're, they're 50,000 combat troops. While they may be in a non-combat classification, uh, they'll still have the same gear. Uh, they'll still be defending U.S. interests. They'll still be training uh, Iraqi forces in formation. Mm -hmm. Uh, we still have over 100,000 civilian contractors. The majority of them are in security roles. Um, and people are still being stopped, lost, and deployed to Iraq against their will. Do you think that we'll ever get fully out of Iraq? Yeah, someday. Um, you know, I was stationed in the Philippines during the 99th year of U.S. occupation back in the late 80s. And the Filipino people are on the verge of, uh, you know, kicking the U.S. out. It, it's taken over 100 years, though. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't take that long, but unless the people of the U.S. Uh, sort of rise up and change U.S. government policy, uh, we'll be in Iraq for a very long time. I've, I've been hearing from other people that uh, we just redeployed a bunch of uh, new people out of Fort Hood. How many people is that? You know, I, I don't know. what uh, I, I work in Oakland, California, mm -hmm. and I work the phones every day getting calls from people all over the country and overseas who are refusing to deploy. And the issues in Fort Hood are the issues that I'm hearing all the time of people have gone through multiple deployments, are feeling burnt out, uh, and simply can't do it anymore. It's not like they politically have come to an epiphany. It's like they have mentally and physically have broken down. Those people would have been discharged from the military in previous years, but out of desperation for combat troops to fill these roles, uh, the military is overlooking significant post-traumatic stress and even physical injuries as like people with back problems and feet problems now. What are your views on the legality of the war in Iraq? Um, do you feel that it is, as Pat Selman said, illegal as hell? Yeah, I was, I was out uh, protesting in 2003, uh, putting out that the war in Iraq was illegal. And, and it hasn't become any less illegal over the last uh, six or seven years. I think there's actually a very uh, argument worth having of whether the Afghanistan war is illegal, of whether you know 11 or 12 um, Saudi Arabians attacking the U.S. in a criminal action justifies you know, a massive U.S. attack on a nation of Afghanistan. We're, I thought we were, we were attacked by Islam. Yeah, you know, and apparently they're building a mosque on Ground Zero as we speak. So yeah, right on it. That's very concerning. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the dirt, in the, in the pit, I believe. Yeah. That is the plan. Yeah. And uh, I think they're going to have a... Uh, That's a, what I heard. Right, and there's going to be an eternal uh, American flag on fire. In, on, on that mouse. <laughs> it's going to be the, uh, the eternal flame of, of the American flag. flag. Exactly. Yeah. That's, I believe that's the plan. Oh, have you seen the movie Avatar? I did, and I thought it actually was a very good depiction of GI resistance, whereas people, you know, fighting for the U.S. Uh, empire mm -hmm. in that kind of 3D setting actually came to the conclusion that they had more in common with the native people that they were uh, oppressing, and they turned the guns around and to their own peril uh, fought against uh, the same people that sent them into battle. So I thought it was an uplifting story of, of what happened in Vietnam and to some extent GI resistance is happening today where thousands of troops are refusing to fight. Um, do you think that people would care more about um, foreign wars if the people we were killing were 10 feet tall? You know, it's interesting, you know, like, uh, you know, how, how much we identify with the, the adversary. And during Vietnam, I think a lot more people identified with the Vietnamese because they sort of had a socially progressive uh, political framework. Whether you agreed or disagreed with socialism and nationalism and, and maybe even communism, you sort of understood where they were coming from. Uh, whereas in these wars, yeah, it's easy to become, it's easy to be taken aback by some of the extremes of Islam. And I think a lot of people use that as a, as a reason not to care or to stand on the sidelines as we continue an unending occupation of those countries. And could you talk maybe just a little bit more um, about what your organization is and maybe plug your website? Courage to Resist, uh, CourageToResist.org. We've been around for five years or so. 
uh, we support people who are facing prison and sometimes very significant prison for uh, refusing to fight. We've helped people travel to Canada and uh, we have 200 people living in Canada now who are former U.S. Uh, military people. Some of them are getting deported one by one. Some of those people are going to jail for a year or more. Uh, we, we fund uh, legal defenses. We find lawyers pro bono and low cost around the country to take on cases and we've done that for dozens and dozens of cases. Uh, Bradley Manning is one such uh, person I mentioned now that uh, we're busting our ass for. Um, uh, Nasser Abdo is a, uh, a Muslim conscientious objector who's uh, uh, refusing to be deployed to Afghanistan because he doesn't believe in war anymore. He specif specifically doesn't want to kill uh, fellow Muslims, so that's very controversial, but we're, we're used to controversy. Mm -hmm. um, but back to, back to Manning, we've set up a defense fund. Uh, he's been held in isolation for over three months now. Uh, but for the first time, as of a couple days ago, he has a civilian attorney. Uh, we've been able to uh, visit him and verify that he's in good spirits and good health. Uh, we've raised over $50,000 to pay his legal fund, and we're going to raise another forty grand or so. And we're taking action in September in about over a dozen cities around the world in like an international days of action to support Bradley Manning. And we believe that... Uh, reframing the debate for the public of here's somebody who's facing prison for blowing the whistle on war crimes mm -hmm. is not a crime and that and that's really what's going on Bradley Manning is facing the rest of his life in jail because he's exposing what is actually happening with with our tax dollars the billions and billions of our tax dollars that are being spent in Afghanistan right now mm -hmm. versus schools you know safety uh, mm -hmm. you know and all this kinds of stuff right here while this you know, it's, it's like Rome is burning at home, you know, as, as all of our resources are going off in these Im imperial uh, endeavors. For the average person, they might see a story on the news and be like, oh, that sucks. Well, got to go to work. Um, so what should they be doing? We're always grappling, you know, with how to engage uh, more people. Um, I'm the anomaly. There's very few people that get, to pay, get paid to do uh, what I do full time. But people can write letters to military objectors who go to prison. And those letters are their lifeline to remember why they made a conscious decision to not fight and that people care about, people care about them. Bradley Manning, we are raising money to fund his legal defense. And, with, and without those 800 people that donated already, uh, he would not have a civilian attorney. He would have military attorneys that would be trying to take him and sell him down the river for their expediency and cutting a bad deal that would make their lives easier. Um, and we're, we protest, uh, you know, we do house parties, and we share information about uh, GI objectors. And people have housed uh, AWOL uh, objectors. People have driven AWOL objectors to Canada. Uh, people have driven AWOL objectors back from Canada. Um, so, you know, it's not like there's a mass movement, but there are hundreds of people around the country that are really risking uh, something to uh, support these guys. Um, and if people are interested in helping with that, can they um, get connected through your website? Absolutely. Courage Resist, CourageResist.org, uh, you know, 510-488-3559 for, for people uh, whose internet uh, is down. Uh, and we talk to people all the time and uh, try to plug them in. Uh, you know, we have a, a, every other week we do a newsletter summing up the situation of GI objectors, action alerts of of what people can do. Uh, we've, we have actually a very successful track record of, of, of getting people out of jail, people, getting people out of the military. And sometimes only a few hundred people uh, writing a letter, making a phone call at a very strategic moment could make the difference of whether a case uh, goes forward or it's dismissed, whether somebody gets out of the military or whether they go to jail. Uh, a couple of the cases we won recently is a uh, a specialist, Mark Hall, was facing prison for writing an angry hip-hop song about stop loss. And, wow. hi and the brass... Uh, Is hip-hop against the law? His hip-hop was against, against the military regulations, according to the Army, because it had innuendo that he would go crazy. He would go nuts if he was forced to go back to Iraq. And being crazy is illegal. Well, he, he'd... Uh, he would take his M16 and spray bullets, you know, and, and he wouldn't be able to control himself and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So the brass is like, you're threatening to kill me. Mm -hmm. That's, a, you know, that's five years in prison, buddy. Mm -hmm. And 
So when he was, you know, hip hop is dangerous. Hip hop can be dangerous, especially in the United States Army. Um, so it took a lot of effort to actually get him out of a jail in Kuwait. You know, he was jailed in Kuwait in isolation for over a month before we were able to get him help. Another uh, case we won recently, uh, Alexis Hutchinson was a single mother um, who was facing deployment. At the last minute, her mother was going to take care of her baby, and her mother had some significant medical issues. And the Army said, well, no problem. You know, there's a foster care system here in Georgia. You deploy to Afghanistan, your kid goes to foster care, and you'll probably get him back later. And so she's like, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not deploying. She ended up in jail. Her kid ended up in foster care. And it was only because people like us, you know, mobilized our networks to, like, cause a ruckus and, and beat back the military because they look pretty damn bad by uh, stealing somebody's, you know, infant away from them and putting them in jail. The military doesn't have, like, babysitters available for, like, three years? <laughs> no, it's... Um, you know, the sad thing is, is every foster care system around every major U.S. base is overloaded. Um, a lot of times what really happens is that a newly married couple um, will get married and the, and the soldier will have a child maybe from a, a former wife uh, or girlfriend. He gets deployed. Uh, his new wife promises to take care of the child, but she decides now is a great time to break up with that dude she didn't really like anyways. Mm. She abandons the child. The child goes into foster care. Mm. And the dude doesn't, you know, for the most part, that kind of hardship used to win somebody a, a ticket out of battle. Mm. But because of the new military regulations, they're, they're so desperate for people, those kinds of hardship issues don't really amount to much anymore. So they just toss the kid into foster care for months and months at a time. Um, what do you see as being a um, political avenue forward? Or do you see any? You know, I'm not sure what the political avenue is. Uh, you know, we have a, a, a president uh, who's made uh, promises to, to remain in Afghanistan for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a, an army that's uh, breaking down, where people are simply physically and mentally broken down from multiple deployments. Mm. Um, I, I don't know. I don't I have no idea what's going to happen. 